Well, the NRA yesterday walked out of the White House gun meetings, saying the whole thing felt like a show designed to provide cover for what they called, quote, an attack on the Second Amendment. We will be joined live by the executive director of the NRA next about the group's next move. Fox News alert on new reaction from the National Rifle Association to the ongoing gun debate in this country. The group came out of yesterday's gun violence meeting with the vice president, Joe Biden, calling that meeting a, quote, political show. It issued a statement that reads in part, quote, we were disappointed with how little this meeting had to do with keeping our children safe and how much it had to do with an agenda to attack the Second Amendment. While claiming that no policy proposals would be prejudged, this task force spent most of its time on proposed restrictions on lawful firearms owners, honest, taxpaying, hardworking Americans. Joining me now is Chris Cox. He's the chief lobbyist for the NRA. Chris, thanks so much for being here. Megan, thanks for having me. So you went to the White House, or your, your, your colleagues go to the White House to meet with the vice president. Obviously, as somebody who is you know, chiefly responsible for the 2004 assault weapons ban that was in place, you know, Joe Biden, we all know where he stands. But what did you expect you were going to get there? Well, Megan, we were hoping to have a meaningful conversation about how we keep our kids safe. That's a conversation that's happening all over America. Those, are, those of us who are parents are having it. And we were hoping to have some, some meaningful discussion, but it became very clear very early that they weren't looking to hear from gun owners. They were looking to blame gun owners. And that's unfortunate because this is a, a very serious discussion. There's things that can be done, but our number one objective is to keep our kids safe. All right, that's what I want to pick up on with you. There are things that can be done. Your group holds a lot of power, and that's because the American people believe in your mission. So many millions of Americans believe in your mission, and I know your enrollments have gone way up in the, in the wake of all this talk and so on. But then there are millions of Americans who hold a different view. What is it you think can be agreed on? Well, there's things that can be done right now if we look at the goal of protecting our kids. We need more armed security. Uh, it was good enough for Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton supported cops in schools. If it's good enough for Bill Clinton, it should be good enough for President Obama. But, Megan, we also have to address the underlying problem and have an honest discussion about what works and what doesn't work. Gun control has been a failed experiment. Joe Biden pushed a gun ban through in 1994, and Bill Clinton's Justice Department said it had no impact on crime. So let's look at mental health. Let's look at a violent culture. Let's look at things that can really address the underlying problem. Then we can start making a difference in our kids' lives. Thank you for that correction. 94, it, and it was in place until 2004. All right, but what specifically? And I know, I mean, clearly, clearly we need to look at the mental health system. I've said on this program many times that, that some are so focused on disarming the madman that they're not focused at all on how we dissuade them. Man, the bad man. I mean, or at least control him or put him in some place where he can't get access to any weapons, whether it's a gun or anything. So that's clearly needs to be needs to be addressed. But is there any gun restriction? You know, they're talking about universal background checks or tightening the mental health background checks that go in place. Is there anything that you could agree on? Well, Megan, you're right with regards to the mental health system. There were red flags in all of these instances where people ignored problems. We can't do that anymore in this country. If you see something, you need to say something. The mental health records need to be put in the gun background check system. No question about it. About half the states aren't putting in those records. We support efforts to get those guns in the, in the system or get those records in the system. But the problem is, Megan, as you know, in Connecticut, these guns were stolen. Yeah. So we can talk about background checks all day long, but it's not addressing the underlying problem of how do we keep our kids safe. Let's do a better job with school security. Let's do a better job with mental health. And then let's look across the board at a violent culture that we all know is having an impact. But the National Rifle Association supports safety and responsibility. That's who we are. That's what we're about. And we're not going to accept the blame for a madman or a deranged criminal who goes out and causes problems. Yeah, I'll listen, there's, there are clearly some people who are looking to just use what's happened as an excuse to push an agenda they had long before this. But there are many others who are rational thinking people who just say, is there anything we can do? Because we, we don't want another another new town. We don't want it. And if there's a way of keeping the high capacity magazine or the AR-15 out of the hands of somebody like La Adam Lanza, they're, they're trying to think of a way. And, and, and they, right. they've been focused a lot on those high capacity magazines. You've heard your detractors say, what do you need 100, 100 rounds for? You know, I mean, right. in what capacity is that necessary? Your thoughts on it? Uh, Megan, every gun owner in America uh, 
was heartbroken over what happened in Connecticut. And there's no gun owner in America who wants to see some madman go out and misuse a firearm. But we start, we have to be honest in this country about what works and what doesn't work. We had a gun ban. We had a high capacity magazine ban, not for six months or for a year, but for a decade. And even Bill Clinton's Justice Department said it had no impact. So if we want to paper over these problems with feel good legislation that won't keep our kids safe, that's the direction the conversation should go. That's not our objective. That's not our underlying principle. Our principle is let's work together to keep our kids safe. Let's do a better job with armed security. Let's address and tackle these underlying problems with mental health. If we do that, we can help keep our kids safe and we'll all feel better sending them to school. What did they say at the White House about the mental health issue? I know that's something else they're going to take a look at. Sebelius, Kathleen Sebelius more t is more taking the helm on that, we're told, rather than Joe Biden. But what did they say to you when you pushed that issue? They weren't interested in talking about those things. They were interested in talking about pursuing a failed gun control agenda. And that's unfortunate. And now we're going to take this conversation not only to the American people, but to Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill who are interested in having a meaningful conversation. Yesterday was nothing more than a dog and pony show. They checked the box. Yep, we met with the NRA. They had no interest in hearing what we had to say. And that's unfortunate, given the, the seriousness of this situation we're facing. And quickly, before I let you go, could you just clarify for those of us who don't understand what you said about the mental health, the records getting more uh, connected to the background checks. How, how could that be done? Sure. Well, the background check system was set up to prevent people who shouldn't get access to firearms from getting access. Violent criminals, dishonorably discharged from the military, and mentally adjudicated by a court is mentally defective. About half the states don't put those mental the mental defective records into the system. We supported legislation in the past to include those records. We call on Congress to demand the states put those records in. But Megan, let's not forget that the best background check system in the world is not going to prevent someone from committing an evil act. So mm -hmm. what can we do right now immediately to protect our kids? It's school security and it's addressing a broken mental health system. Chris Cox, thanks a lot for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks, Megan. All the best.